All right, good morning, church. Apologize for the delay, technical difficulties. Uh, thank you for your patience. But let's go ahead and take our hymn books and stand together. We'll sing unto the Lord this morning. Turn over to hymn number 20. We'll sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Hymn number 20. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood, a mortal ills prevailing, for still our ancient foe doth seek to his craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal did we in our own strength confide our strength would be losing were not the man on our side, the man of God's own choosing, does ask who that may be, Christ Jesus it is he, Lord Sabbath his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God hath will to try and triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. We can endure for and kindreds go this mortal life also the body they may kill God's truth abideth still his kingdom is forever Amen Great singing this time pastor is going to open us up with prayer Amen. Let's seek the Lord and ask for his blessing on this morning's service. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this meeting. Thank you that we're able to come and worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to set aside, Lord, distractions and just the daily things that we go through, Lord, to focus our hearts, our desires on you and you alone. Lord, help us today as we honor moms, that we celebrate motherhood, we celebrate the Christian family. Father, thank you for all the uh, godly moms that you've given to us, all the godly moms that are part of our church. And we want to encourage them today that you would give them a special blessing. And Lord, as we consider uh, the blessing of parenthood, of motherhood and fatherhood, Lord, you're our heavenly Father. And we can ultimately look to you, Lord, for our source for grace, peace, wisdom, joy, and thank you for that. Lord, we pray that as we have this service, that you would be exalted, you would be glorified by all that's said and done. We pray that you would do a mighty work in our hearts, Lord, that you would uh, bind any work of Satan that would seek to hinder your working this morning, and that you would have free course to draw us into your presence, manifest your power. May we be yielded and obedient to all that you have for us today. And so, Lord, again, we just thank you. We praise you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue singing. Let's turn over to 348. 
348, we'll sing, My Hope is in the Lord. He freely gives on the last His grace has planned it all Tis mine but to believe And recognize His work of love And Christ receive For me He died For me
Thank you so much, young people. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. That's a picture right there. If you folks didn't get one, you should have taken a picture. That's beautiful right there. Amen. Well, good morning to everyone, and happy Mother's Day to all our moms. And uh, we're welcoming those on the live stream, apologizing for some of the delays and technical difficulties, but we're here and thankful to be able to worship the Lord and take some time to honor moms today. We'll do that in just a moment. I do have a couple of quick announcements. Um, first, do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? Anyone visiting for the very first time? Just don't want to overlook anyone. Thankful to see a great crowd today. Uh, we're praying for our upcoming family conference. It'll be here May 21st through 23rd with evangelist Dan Knickerbocker. And Friday, May 21st, we kick things off with our young adults, our college and career ministry meeting right here at 7 p.m. for a meeting. And then Saturday, we'll have a married couple's banquet that's May 22nd. You husbands, circle that date. Invite your wife out for a nice hot date and a nice special time here at the church. And uh, we're asking if you could please register online. Uh, we have a registration available on our church website or our Facebook page. In fact, it's the only time I'm going to do this, but if you want to even take your phone out right now, couples, and actually go on our, our website or Facebook page, and it takes literally two seconds, and you put your first name, last name, and choose your dish. And if you even want to do that now, that will be a help. That way we can get everyone signed up, ready to go. We know ahead of time who to prepare for. Uh, and so you'll have some choices there. It will be a nice catered Italian dinner, a nice special time. There will be child care provided. So bring the kids. We'll have the nursery available and, and workers to watch children there that evening as well. And then also, please be in prayer. Uh, next Sunday we're resuming choir practice. So if you're interested in joining the church choirs, please speak to me. And choir members, be ready. Next Sunday at 5.30, we'll resume practice. And today, Brother Noel is sick, so there'll be no uh, discipleship class today. So the discipleship class takes off. And then lastly, Saturday, May 29th, we have a men's barbecue. And that's going to be right here at church, May 29th at 1 p.m. For men and boys, all are welcome. And we'll have a great time, great food, and great fellowship that Saturday. All right. Happy Mother's Day. And I want to wish my mom a happy Mother's Day. And we thank God for our moms. Without them, we, none of us would be here. Amen. And I also, at this time, want to call up my wife. I want to ask Pam to come on up to the front here this morning. I'm going to get on the uh, headset here. I have a very special message for the church this morning. And I um, just want to... Wish my wife a happy Mother's Day. Love you so much. And I want to give to her one of these beautiful carnations here. And Pam is such a great mom to Nikki, a great blessing in our church, a great example. And I'm so thankful for all that she does for our family. And we love you so much, sweetheart. And... Um, I also want to just kind of make an announcement this morning. We are expecting baby number two. And I, I, I don't want to make this about us. I want to make it about God. And we just have a shared testimony. It's a, it's a small issue for most folks, but it was a big deal for us. You know, we were praying for two years that God would give us another child. And something that we struggled with if we're being honest and you know the typical going to the doctors and not getting answers and this year we probably if we were being honest had given up and we were scheduled to see a specialist in the month of April at the end of April and two weeks before that appointment my wife comes in the room crying that we're expecting a baby and that morning you know our prayer request had been Lord bless the doctors as they help us that's kind of how we started praying. But that morning, I just prayed, Lord, I forgot. You can still do it. Lord, you're still able if it's your will. And that afternoon. <laughs> so God is good all the time. And he's good in all that he does. And I'm looking around the room, and I know we have some couples this morning that, you know, for years, decades, even waited and prayed. Looking at the Munn family. <laughs> and... um Sorry, I would say I'm not usually like this, but I'm a crier. That's, that's what I am. But, uh, but we, we just thank God for answers to prayer and what he does and, and just blessing us. And children are a blessing. Parenthood is a blessing, and we wouldn't trade it for the world. 
And so I want to just wish a happy Mother's Day to my wife and to all the moms. And at this time, my wife's going to help, and maybe a few people want to help pass out some gifts for all the moms this morning. First, let's start with, do we have any, any great-grandmas here this morning? Any great-grandmas this morning? All right, she's a great-grandma. Sister Ever, you can come on up next. Sister, come on up. Do we have any grandmas? Any grandmas? All right, grandmothers can come. Sister Roseanne, yes, grandmas can come on. All right, Sister Ann, there we go. We have a special carnation flower and also a special booklet written by a pastor's wife in California. We want to be a blessing to the moms. All right, we got a lot of grandmas here. Great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, now let's, let's see the mom with the most children. Let's see, how many moms have five and more, five or more? All right, you got your, some of you got your gifts already. All right, four or more? Three or more? Moms, come on down, three or more. All right, there we go. Sorry? Four or more children. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now if you have three or more children. Amen. All right, let's have all the moms come on down now. We have, I think we have enough space here. All our moms. And let's just give a hand for our moms this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you for all of your, your faithful service to your home, to God, to our church. I spoke to some of our teen guys out in the hallway, I said, you better be on your best behavior today and give mom a break. Amen. And husbands, we're supposed to spoil them today. Amen. And so we thank God for all of our moms. Praise the Lord as I look across and just a tremendous blessing, godly ladies that uh, love their families, love the Lord. And what an encouragement it is. Sister Kaylee, this is your first Mother's Day, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Of course, baby Harper is going to be a year old this June. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day once again to all you moms, and we're thankful for each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Now that we're in a great mood, a cheerful mood, I think we're ready for, to collect an offering this morning. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So let's have our ushers make their way to the front. Men, you can come, and we'll collect this morning's offering. All right, let's pray for the offering and ask for God's blessings. Father, thank you for the privilege to give. Thank you that we can give in response to all that you've given to us. Lord, you meet all of our needs. Lord, you bless us in ways that we don't deserve. And Lord, we, we praise you with our lips, but also by our actions, our deeds, and even with this offering today. Would you take it and multiply it, use it for the furtherance of your gospel? And would you continue using us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
someday I'd be like you And someone will be watching me And though I know you're human You don't seem that way to me If I was granted one wish It's like you I'd want to be That's a great mother-daughter duo right there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, ladies, for that. What a blessing. Let's take our Bibles this morning. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. And I want to share some encouraging thoughts this morning. I hope you can stick with me. I know... Maybe you have a reservation or a nice home-cooked meal planned or a special time. Uh, but let's take, some, take a look at God's Word this morning for some encouragement, for some instruction, and ask that God would help us. Let's look at Proverbs 23, and we'll read from verse 22 through verse 25. Proverbs 23, verse 22 says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother, when she is old, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. He that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. And she that bear thee shall rejoice. And I want to preach a message entitled this morning, She that bear thee shall rejoice. Let's pray. Lord, would you help us now as we look at your word? Would you encourage our hearts? Would you speak to us? Lord, our goal is to be a blessing this morning. I pray that by your spirit, the truths that we examine, you would help them to take root in the lives of all the moms, but all of us today as believers, that we would walk in the way of wisdom that you have outlined for us. 
Help us to walk in what you have designed in your infinite love and wisdom for us in creating the family, motherhood, fatherhood, children. And Lord, our goal is to do our best to honor that design today. So would you have your way and minister to all of our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Bob Green in the Detroit Free Press did a study in 1981 detailing the monetary value of a wife's services in the home. And he listed various, pers- various functions she would perform. A chauffeur, gardener, family counselor, maintenance worker, cleaning person, housekeeper, cook, errand runner, bookkeeper, budget manager, interior decorator, caterer, dietitian, secretary, public relations, hostess. And using this impressive list, he calculated in 1981 that figure that came out to be $40,000 $823.64 a year, that if adjusted for inflation would be over $120,000 a year. That's all that a mother can do, and many more we can even add to that list in our homes. Don't take that for granted. Someone said this, man works from son to son, but a mother's work is never done. You know, motherhood is a blessing, and my hope this morning is to be an encouragement to all the moms to be encouraged that you have a divine calling that God has given you, that you are perfectly made for that calling. He wanted you to mother those children that you have and no one else by his infinite wisdom and design. And we should all be thankful for the mothers that we have. The Bible has a lot to say about motherhood, and so we all need to be thankful for godly moms that helped us and encouraged us along the way. And so again, motherhood is a divine calling. It's a part of God's natural order. It's a part of God's original design for us. And I hate so much the attack on God's design today. You know, I was reading recently, leading medical uh, 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 journals and, and people in our country today are confused about what a family is and even what motherhood is. Maybe you heard Harvard Medical Journal recently use the term birthing people to refer to moms, birthing people. Think about that term for just a second. Who gives birth? Who gets pregnant? Only women can give birth. There, should, there ought not be a question about that. But they use the term birthing people, and they said this. They wanted to include those who identify as non-binary or transgender because not all who give birth identify as women or girls. Beloved, back in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, God created man and woman. That's it. He created husband and wife. He created mother and father. That's God's design. That's God's plan. You can't improve upon what God created. And many people are so confused today. There's there's great evil. The devil is really behind it trying to change all of that. Years ago in the Franklin Elmont Herald, here locally, our local paper here on their Mother's Day issue, they published an article entitled, Mothering is Mothering. And in that article, they feature two lesbians who lived in Malvern who are raising two children, a little boy and a little girl. And the article said, I don't think there's any real difference. Parenting is parenting. No. There is a difference. There's a big difference when we depart from what God has created and what God has designed. And no amount of social engineering and liberal brainwashing and politics and policies and all this stuff they're trying to force on us, no amount of that is going to change what God has established. What God has established must stand, and we must stand for what God has created. We ought not run from God's wisdom, God's love in designing the family. One man, one woman committed to each other in marriage, procreating, having children. That's God's design. And so we stand against people that are trying to corrupt and chip away at the foundation of our, of our society and of our morality. May we not stray away from emphasizing that. This morning in our church, we have many single moms. Many of you know I was raised primarily in a single parent home with, with a single mom. And I thank God for single moms that are doing an especially hard work. But even they would stand up here with you and tell you that God's design is best for a mother and a father to raise children in the nurture admonition of the Lord. We ought not be afraid to say that. We ought not be ashamed of what God has designed for us and emphasize that. 
And so this passage that we're looking at here in Proverbs 23 teaches us that children of righteousness and wisdom will bring great joy to their moms. Children who walk in righteousness, who walk in wisdom, will bring great joy. And I want to bring great joy to all the moms this morning. And I want to bring great honor and joy, most importantly, to the Lord. And so let's consider how can we make moms rejoice. She that bear thee shall rejoice. Verse 22 says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. This is an exhortation to listen. An exhortation to listen. The book of Proverbs is a book written by the wisest and wealthiest and some that say the most powerful man in history, King Solomon. And while Proverbs is primarily written to young people, any one of us can grow in wisdom. Wisdom, someone said this, wisdom is the capacity of the mind to understand life from God's perspective. Wisdom allows me to step back and take the big picture look and look at life from God's perspective. And throughout the book of Proverbs, Solomon encourages us to get wisdom. They that have wisdom love life, that it's better to get wisdom than gold, and that those who get wisdom find life and will receive favor from the Lord. So we need wisdom. And throughout the book of Proverbs, it's very clear that wisdom oftentimes is acquired from generation to generation. That wisdom gets passed down from generation to generation. And that it's a blessing for the younger to learn from the aged. Amen? The more experienced. It's a blessing and it's a principle in the Word of God. We ought not run away from that. It also means moms and dads have a wonderful privilege of passing down wisdom. And that means, moms and dads, you must yourself be walking in wisdom, walking in righteousness and walking with God. And the Bible is clear, children need to take heed. That means to, to hearken, to listen with the intent of obeying. My mom used to always joke around, there's a difference between hearing and listening. And so she's calling for dinner and I'm playing video games or playing basketball outside and maybe I, I hear her calling but I'm not listening until I actually realize, oh, she's dead serious. I need to get my behind to dinner, the dinner table right now. That's hearkening, that you listen with the intent that I have to go ahead and do this. And that's what the Bible is saying here. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. And so children need to take heed. Take time to listen. All of us, take time to listen to believers that have been on the path for a good while now. You know, some people shy away from traditionalism. And we're always trying to look for the new. We're, in, we're living in a society that we, what's the new thing? What's the new fashion thing that we need to do? And I can appreciate new things and new technology and new methods. They can be a blessing, but listen, there's something about sticking to the old paths. There's something to stick to, sticking to the tried and true path. The well-worn path that has shown us there is a way to live that is righteous. There is a way to live that is wise, that will be a blessing in your life. I read a story of young people that were lost in the woods, and one of them saw a path that looked like it was a well-worn path, and they said, that's the way we need to go to get out of here. His friends asked why. He said, because others have gone down here and been able to escape and find and get out. And that's what wisdom is. It's looking at the well-worn path and realizing that I can learn from this. Take heed, hearken. And so wisdom can never be learned until the attention is won. There must be a deliberate effort to listen and to learn from the elderly, from the, from the aged. Go with me to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Well, let's start reading actually Titus 2, verse 2. It says that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity and patience. Verse 3, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Verse 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now the verses that I just read to you, the women's lib people would have a heart attack if they read some of these verses. 
because we can't be traditional. Why? How dare we do that? That's so backwards. And I want to tell you that the word of God is infinite. It's, an, it's eternal. It lasts forever. It's a moral principle that all generations must think about, consider, and apply. And it's very clear from the word of God that God has a place, a wonderful place for mothers and for wives. And we ought not shy away from teaching that. We ought not shy away from embracing what God has designed for women. And notice the Bible says that the older teach the younger. And I think about my wife. And I'm so thankful for my mother-in-law. Amen. We can, say, we can be thankful for our mother-in-laws. Amen. And my mother-in-law is great. She's a blessing. And every time I talked to her, I said, thank you for raising her the way you did. Because she's a great wife and a great mother to our daughter. She's a great support system. Our, our, our home, our family would not be able to operate without her. I mean, I'm a bumbling mess. I'll just be honest with you. But she, she's such a blessing and she's supportive and, and she has my back. And of course, I have hers. And why? Because her mom raised her that way. She's a great cook. She's the best cook there is. Her mom raised her that way. And she fulfills these scriptures because her mom raised her that way. And so this is a blessing. And this is important. This is a blessing that we ought not shy away from. That God has roles. God has expectations. And we can fulfill them and be a blessing in the family. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible talks about the role of children. Children, obey your parents. That's God's expectation for children. That you don't run the family. You don't run the home. Your parents do. Parents said amen right there. You know, I know in America today, a lot of people think, well, you know, we, we don't want to stifle their self-esteem, and so we always have to say yes and let them have their way, and, and you know, that's, we just don't want to hurt, hurt their self-esteem. And let me tell you something. That God, he's given us eternal principles, tried and true. We ought not run away from them. He said that we, children are to obey parents, not the other way around. Children obey parents, and parents are to raise their children in the nurture. That's love, encouragement, positive reinforcement. Admonition, that's rebuke, correction. And the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The Bible says don't provoke your children to wrath. Right? So God gives us guidelines here as raising children. And children are called to obey their parents. And so for some children and some young, young people here this morning, the greatest gift you could actually give to your mom on Mother's Day is your obedience, is your submission, your obedience, because you can say, Mom, I know you have my best interest at heart, and I could submit to your rules. I can submit to your leadership, Mom and Dad. I can obey and do what the Bible says. And the Bible says it's a blessing, that it may be, lo your, it may be long with you. Your life, you'll have a long life through your obedience. It's a promise that God gives when children practice obedience to their parents, God promises that I'll bless your life for it. I'll extend your life for it. Don't you want that? Isn't that tremendous? And so God calls for children to obey their parents. Someone said an ounce of mother is worth a ton of priest. That was a Spanish proverb, and of course we don't believe in priests, but we think about the influence of a Christian home, godly moms and godly dads. It makes a difference. It made a difference in my life, I'll tell you that much. Praying moms, moms that take time to read the Bible with their families. The great president, Abraham Lincoln, said, All that I am I hope and hope to be I owe to my angel mother. And so motherhood, it's a tremendous blessing. There's as exhortation, number one, to listen, take heed. But then number two, we must have the right attitude. How can we bring joy to mom? She that bear thee shall rejoice. Number two, have the right attitude. In Proverbs chapter 23, let's go back to our text. Proverbs 23 and verse 22 says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. In other words, get it as, as earnestly as you can, as eagerly as you can. Let's look at verse 24. It says, The father of the righteous shall... Greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. She that bear thee shall rejoice. And so we need to have the right attitude to encourage biblical motherhood. It's an exhortation to honor our parents and to honor moms, particularly this Mother's Day. To obey is the action. 
To honor is the attitude and mindset. In other words, you can obey without honoring. Did you know that? You know, you can say, mom and dad can say, hey, go clean your room, and you stomp your feet and throw a fit, slam the door, and you go inside and clean your room, and you obeyed, but you didn't honor. You see, honoring is the attitude, it's the mindset, it's the spirit. Hey, maybe at home you do what's right, but then when you're out with your friends, you say, oh, my mom and dad, they're no good. Oh, you, you, and you, you down talk, downplay your parents. A lot of children do that. So maybe you're obeying, but you're not honoring. And so, by the way, obedience, obviously, as folks grow older, that shifts, that changes some, but honoring is forever. We are to always honor our parents, no matter how young or how old you are. We honor our father and our mother. And so it's the right attitude. And so I want to, today, today's the day we honor moms. It's Mother's Day. And guess what? Who leads the way in doing this in the home? Guess what? It ought to be the dads. It ought to be the fathers. And don't worry, fathers. I'm coming for you on Father's Day. Don't worry. But today, I'll just give you a little preview. Fathers ought to lead the way in honoring mothers. In other words, you ought to teach your children, you better love your mother, respect her, appreciate her. Fathers set the tone. That means fathers don't down talk their mother, uh, a child's mother in front of them. You uphold her. This is a godly woman that God has given you. You ought to love her, respect her, cherish her, obey her. Fathers lead the way in honoring mothers. And children will see how you treat their mother. Yeah, the kids see how dads treat mom, and they feel like, well, then that's how I'll treat mom, too. That dad doesn't really seem to appreciate her very much. Dad doesn't love her very much. Dad doesn't care for her very much, and maybe I won't either. And so dads lead the way in honoring mothers. So this Mother's Day, take today, for example, we take this day to honor moms, but it's not just about giving her one day off a year. It's not just about one day a year. It's a reminder that we can treat her and respect her every day of the year, that she's special. We ought to cherish and love her. And the, the best Mother's Day gift is all 52 Sundays of the year, every day of the year, you honor mom and you love mom. You give her the respect and affirmation she deserves. And so this morning we acknowledge that mothering and parenting is not for the faint of heart. It's a thankless job oftentimes. But God knows all about thankless parenting and leading. That's how God is as our Heavenly Father. But I want to say thanks to all of our moms today. And I want us to affirm, especially biblical motherhood today. It's a divine calling, as I said earlier. It's a divine calling. If God has enabled you to be a mom, don't take that lightly. Don't diminish that as if it's just something that you can just set aside and not really focus on. That ought to be the major priority of your life if you're a mom here this morning. Today, many parents, many moms feel the pressure to work outside of the home and they take on extra work. But maybe you realize you're taking on an extra load beyond what God has called you to be as a mother as well. In, in other words, don't neglect this calling. And today we're living in a day where our government is helpful, is happy to provide programs to, hey, we'll, we'll help you watch the kids and raise the kids for you and do all of that. But can I tell you, sometimes what might be a help can also hurt. Because where we are delegating our responsibility, we're also delegating our influence. And I really want us to consider this, be cautious, be wise, that as moms and dads, our influence over our kids, over their mindset, over their character, whose job is it to train them up and do that? It's us. And it's a divine calling. It's the highest calling that could ever be is to be a mom and a dad. And don't ever act like it's not a big deal. It's a huge deal. And so to affirm biblical motherhood is to say, God, this is my divine calling. This is part of the reason I even exist and breathe in this world. And so I'm raising these children for you. And it's my job. It's not the pastor's job to raise your kids. It's not Governor Cuomo's job to raise your kids. It's not President Biden's job to raise your kids. It's your job to train up your children in the way of the Lord. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. It's your job. And so don't downplay that. And, and women that are growing up, you young ladies growing up, if God leads you to take a career, praise the Lord, be a blessing. But make sure you understand that God may have a plan for you in motherhood. And that, not be, that ought not be set aside and disregard it as nothing, as light. It's a divine calling. 
And this morning, I want to affirm biblical motherhood is a blessing. It's a difficult but noble calling. Proverbs 31, verse 28 says, Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. In other words, in Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman, she considers it a dignity. It's a valuable thing to raise children. It's, it's a dignified position to raise children and take care of them. It's a noble calling. And I'm so sick and tired of these women lit, women lit people downplaying motherhood and downplaying. And, and now there's this push that women have to be just like men and men have to be just like women. No. Women, you need to be just like women. Be a blessing. Be the best woman you can be. And men, be men. Be the men God has called you to be. But we have this confusing period where we're pushing women to force them into a mold to be like men. And you study it out. That's why we have all the issues with abortion and transgenderism. All of that is behind it. Because one of the most noble callings there is, motherhood, we're trying to erase that out of our society. I'm talking to you, some people in our government would love to put a limit on how many children you can have because of the climate. Some people would want to maybe, hey, you have to pay an extra or something because you're contributing to a carbon uh, tax or something like that because of how many children you have. This is where we are in our world today. We're downplaying that which God has lifted up for us in biblical motherhood. And so this morning... I want us to understand it's a high calling. It's a dignified calling. And all of us and our families ought to affirm our moms and love them and encourage them in this great calling. But then thirdly, and finally, righteous and wise children. Righteous and wise children. It's a great blessing for parents to have children that are righteous and wise. It's a, it's a great comfort to know that children walk in the faith. And one reason a son for a son or daughter to pursue and gain wisdom is that it will make parents glad. Our text tells us in verse 24, The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. He that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. And she that bear thee shall rejoice. And so it will make our parents glad when we walk in wisdom and righteousness. It's an appropriate reward. That's how we can reward our parents, is to cling to wisdom and righteousness. Proverbs 31, verse 25 says, She shall rejoice in time to come. And it's referring to the fact that the virtuous woman, that as her children grow up and live godly lives and go on to be successful and to maybe rear up now grandchildren and see them going to Sunday school and, and, and singing up in the children's choir and memorizing scripture, that she shall rejoice in time to come. She that bear thee shall rejoice. And so the question then is, how do we produce righteous and wise children? You see, this woman, this virtuous woman can face the future with optimism and gladness if she knows her children are walking in God's will. So how can we ensure that children walk in God's will? That they're walking in righteousness and wisdom? Well, as parents, we have the wonderful responsibility and privilege to teach them. And we teach them that righteousness and wisdom do not come from us, but they come from God. Righteousness and wisdom come from God. They are found in Him. It's who He is. And that means as parents, we can introduce our children to God and teach them who God is and what God's plan is for their lives. You know, you remember Paul and Timothy, and Paul considered Timothy a son in the faith. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul is commending Timothy for, for being a great worker, a great servant in the ministry, a great asset in the ministry. But Paul said, you know, Timothy, it didn't really start with you and me, though. It's not based on what I taught you. He said in verse 15 of chapter 3, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He said, Timothy, your, your mother and grandmother Lois and Eunice, they are the ones that started with them, that they instructed you about Jesus. They instructed you about the gospel. They taught you the way of salvation. And moms and dads, 
Isn't it a wonderful blessing to teach your children about God? One of the greatest joys of parenthood is praying with my daughter and hearing her memorize scripture and teach, seeing her sing the songs. And that's the highest blessing there is. And so parents have this blessing that you can introduce them to your Savior. You can introduce them to the way of salvation. And I know sometimes it's easy to say, well, let the Sunday school teacher lead them to Christ or let the pastor lead them to Christ. And of course, we're happy to do that. But wouldn't it be great? If mom and dad, you could lead your children to Christ. Some of you maybe have young children. And you have the privilege as they grow older to teach them about the gospel that we're sinners. And because of our sin, we deserve God's judgment, God's wrath. We're hopeless in our sin because we can't stop sinning. We're, we're bound in our sin. But God is so loving and merciful. He sent Jesus, his only son, to die on the cross for our sin. And we get to tell them how with simple faith... When you turn from sin and believe on Christ, He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you and give you eternal life. That's the greatest lesson you can ever teach a child. And moms and dads have the privilege of doing that. And so it's a blessing to teach our children the way of salvation. We think of John the Baptist. The Lord Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest man who ever lived. Well, you know what? The Bible says in Luke 1 verse 6 that his parents, Zacharias and, his, and Elizabeth, were righteous before God. It's a blessing to have parents that set that example. They're righteous before God. You want righteous children? You want wise children? Then we as parents, you as a mom, you as a dad, you must be the example of righteousness and wisdom. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6 quickly here and then we'll close. Deuteronomy chapter 6, this portion of scripture, the Jews call this the Shema, literally means to hear, it's their declaration of faith, their confession of faith of all that they believe, and it describes who God is and our duty before God, and we can learn from this Shema this morning, in Deuteronomy 6 verse 1, says, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be fruitful and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods or other gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And we can continue reading this, but this is the instructions that God gave to parents to share to their children. For time's sake, let's skip down to verse number 20. Verse 20 says, And when thy son asked thee and son asked thee, and what means the testimony? And the statutes. And the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you. Then thou shalt say, then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen. And the Lord brought us out of the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord showed signs, the Lord showed signs and wonders and great and 
sore upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from them that he might bring us in to give us the land which I swear unto our fathers. The Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God. And note this phrase, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness. We observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. These are powerful words. Listen, we can apply this for our lives today. Has God done something in your life? Tell your kids about it. Has God delivered you and saved you? The greatest act of redemption in the Old Testament is the Exodus. The greatest act of redemption for us is Christ on the cross. Tell your children. And we tell our children it's for our own good. That God loves us. And if we serve him and follow him, he's honored by that. He will bless us. It's a wonderful privilege to teach our children to walk in wisdom and righteousness. I want to close with a poem that I read this week that I, was, I thought was encouraging. Whose gentle voice, when childish heart, was pierced by disappointment's dart, did consolation sweet in part, it was the voice of mother. Whose sacrifice, whose smile and tears have brought their blessings through the years in sharing all our joys and cares, the sacrifice of mother. Whose counsel and whose tenderness come back today our lives to bless to teach us true unselfishness, the tenderness of mother. Whose blessed face in vision bright, like beacon gleaming through the night, is here today to lend us light, the gentle face of mother mother. Let's pray this morning. Lord, thank you for mothers. Lord, thank you for their sacrifice, their labor of love. Lord, we want to encourage them in the work. Lord, we pray that you would equip them and enable them to do this divine work which you've enabled them to have, that you would give them the power, the strength, the wisdom. Lord, we pray for our families today that we would raise up the next generation that fears you, that knows you, that loves you. That's what you taught the Jewish people in Deuteronomy 6. That's what we need to teach our children today. Lord, it's a blessing to know you, and it's a blessing to serve you. And Father, may we pass that on to the coming generations. With our heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, the greatest gift you can give to your mom is if you decide to serve the Lord, is if you decide to first trust the Lord in salvation. Maybe this morning our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Maybe this morning God's speaking to you about the need for salvation. That you haven't made a decision to trust Christ and repent and be saved. Maybe God's dealing with you now that you want to respond. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? You say, Pastor, I need to be saved. God's speaking to me. I want to get this settled, my salvation. We want to pray for you. We want to show you from the Word of God what salvation is all about. This morning, as our pianist plays softly, can we just spend a few moments praying for our families, praying for moms, dads, and kids alike. Pray that God would strengthen the family, strengthen our homes. Whatever your role is, husband, wife, mother, father, child, may you do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. May we strive for wisdom and righteousness.
Amen. Why don't we all stand together? Let's stand and sing before we depart this morning. Number 614. Number 614. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Let's sing number 614 in your songbooks. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Amen. Brother Haddon, would you please close us in prayer?